ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host for this evening's show. He is the pub landlord, Mr. Al Murray. A cavalcade is some of the finest stand up you will ever have the good fortune to witness. You lucky people! <laughs> You're lucky, what are you? <laughs> lucky, lucky people! <laughs> the starving kids in Africa, aren't they? Who've never even seen any stand up. That's how lucky you are. <laughs> so... <laughs> and look at the fantastic, this fantastic audience we have here tonight. It's beautiful. There's a lad here, yet with three women sitting next to him. Hey, that's a fantastic effort, Squire. What's your name, Pearl? Oh, Josh. Josh! Beautiful British name. What do you do, Josh? Tell me. Student. Student? <laughs> <laughs> what are you studying? Finance. Finance? Oh, yeah. How to change the role on a till. <laughs> <laughs> Before you use the barcode scanner, check that it's clear, yeah? Boop, yeah, that's your life, isn't it? <laughs> You're only getting the one life, mate. Boop, don't piss it up the wall. <laughs> <laughs> your girlfriend's out with you? Who's someone you've been trying to shake off since Freshers Week? <laughs> What's your name, love? I'm Jenny. Jenny! Beautiful British name, yeah. And, uh, of course, comes from the ancient Norman name, meaning slack. Now... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jenny. What do you do for a living, darling? I'm a research assistant. You're a research assistant. So you don't actually do the research. No. You assist in it. <laughs> you go and get the yellow pages. <laughs> What research are you currently assist in research upon in your capacity as a research assistant? Um, looking at two viruses, which okay. cause... Two viruses? <laughs> I know, it's a busy day. <laughs> you do one before lunch and one after lunch. That way you fit two viruses into the day. Is that how, it, is that how it, is that the essential shift scheme going on? Do virus A in the morning, virus B in the afternoon, yeah? Yeah. Roughly, good girl. <laughs> and, what you, and what are you doing with these viruses? We're seeing which one's bigger. What's going on? We're just seeing if they cause encephalitis in infants. Yeah. <laughs> and if you find out they do, you're going to be pleased? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you heartless cow. Right? <laughs> a tragic race to brains. Now, gentlemen, <laughs> you're a beautiful... We've got a beautiful crowd and we have got a top night of entertainment lined up for you. You deserve it. You're good people. You're lucky people. And Embryon is more than just a stand-up show, ladies and gentlemen. I need to say this from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> some of the acts you see tonight will be some of the finest comics currently plying their trade. Yeah. But who is this merry band, these noble gestures, these happy few, these men on a bound to speak and care not for the consequence but laughter? Never! <laughs> There's so much laughter been owned by so many to so few <laughs> comics. For tonight, you shall be able to say that I was there. And I pity any man a bed this day who did not in our laughter share and we travelled to England and beyond. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, all right. Basically, Churchill won that war by standing on the doorstep, 10 down the street, fuck off Hitler, like that. <laughs> so, we're going to bring the first act on. And I, it's a cracking lane, Jimmy. Please show your appreciation upstairs and downstairs as we welcome onto the stage Mr. Paul Foot. When he comes, son. I remember when I was little, my pet budgerigar died, and my mother went out and bought another one, just the same so that I wouldn't notice. But I knew, and I killed that one too. <laughs> uh, now, uh, that was a joke to start. Um, I, what I'm wondering is, has anyone ever seen a, a programme on the television called You've Been Framed? Uh, oh, I feel you've seen, seen it. it, good, right. Um, some of you maybe haven't seen it. Um, so, if you have not seen the show, then all I can say is, don't worry. Because I now intend to recreate the hilarity of that show... <laughs> ..live on stage. <coughs> Fat 
fat bloke on dance floor spins his obese bitch round. <laughs> they fall with tremendous gravity. <laughs> Gymnastics. It goes wrong. <laughs> Gentleman thwacks his testes on trampoline corner. <laughs> Shattering them. Studio audience clap. <laughs> Big fat piece on jetty. <laughs> Attempts to board dangerous rowing boat. <laughs> By placing all his weight onto one side. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> the frigging thing capsizes. <laughs> he falls into watery discomfort. That is the 14th of June, 2002. That one, it's got the date on the screen. <laughs> Woman on pogo stick hurts her vag. Devout churchgoer receives massive electric shock from an incorrectly wired light up Jesus. <laughs> Man with unusually sharp penis has someone's eye out. <laughs> 250 quid I got for that one. <laughs> The price of a Chinese takeaway has really been increasing in recent years, hasn't it? Isn't it rising? I mean, let's take an example. Plain boiled rice used to be about £1.30. now about £1.40. <laughs> I've got more evidence. <laughs> what about barbecued spare ribs? You know when you get, like, some spare ribs, you know, and it's, well, you're... A bit, of a bit of barbecued ribs in a, in a plum sauce. You pay about 4 30 for that. A couple of years ago, you'd have been looking at below four pounds. <laughs> Ten years ago, you know, for the, for the ribs, it was kind of ribs, isn't it? And it's all kind of like, you know, sort of, sort of drenched in a, well, it's like a, mm, a sauce, a little a plum. Mm, it's, it's, just, it's like, mm, it's like, I mean, you get it, and it's all like it's ribs, isn't it? It's like, but, you know, it's just, well, it's, it's, I, wouldn't, I don't know whether you'd call it a syrup or a sauce, it's sort of somewhere between. But, uh, you know, I mean, you, it's not uh, too drippy, it doesn't drip off, but on the other hand, it's not too sticky, it's just right. <laughs> and uh, you wouldn't have thought, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily think that uh, the, the ribs would go well with, with, with a plum, but, but these people are experts. <laughs> I mean, it just, it just goes right, you get the ribs, I mean, you might think, oh, yeah, I've got these ribs and they're a bit old fatty, old meat from a condemned abattoir. <laughs> but actually, when you get that plum on it, it's lovely, isn't it? a plum, no, no, mm, a plum. Now, t ten years ago, uh, the price of that, well, I can't remember. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm not an expert on the exact prices of all the different dishes ten years ago. That's not what I'm here for. But, I mean, the point I'm trying to make is that the prices are rising. I mean, there is no point going on to me. Oh, Paul, can you name the precise cost in 1995 of the f friggin' rib stuff? You know, it, 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 it's too specific. Don't ask me any more questions. <laughs> less than it was uh, f f two years ago. I'm telling you that, it was less than four pounds two years ago. I mean, this has been going on for years, hasn't it? I mean, probably actually uh, since Victorian times. <laughs> I, mean, I reckon in those days, you'd have had a comedian coming on stage, uh, good morrow, <laughs> wearing a top hat, a bit like me, but maybe not quite as camp, <laughs> and saying, uh, yes, um, the levy for a Chinese banquet, <laughs> which may be consumed in one's residence. Used to be around one farthing, now around two farthings. <laughs> and the audience would have said, well, yes, but it's, it's only the difference of a farthing. In, in those days, people accepted it. <laughs> and therefore, that sort of comedy didn't tend to go down too well. <laughs> well stop throwing your walking canes at me. I'm trying to talk about like, price rises. <laughs> Stuff you, I'm off with some opium. <laughs> People weren't bothered. I mean, everything was so cheap in those days anyway. I mean, in the, in the 19th century, you could buy a whole Chinese restaurant for a guinea. <laughs> I 
I don't know whether that's true. But now, now, it is getting ridiculous what we're having to fork out for our dinners. I mean, people may speak of the dangers of volcanoes and weapons of mass destruction, but what about the invisible threat in our high streets? I don't mean ghosts. <laughs> I'm talking about the escalating tariff of oriental sustenance. I mean, how can, how can, they, justif how can they justify the increases? Now, obviously, there's the oft-heard refrain, isn't there, from the Chinese takeaway uh, owners. Oh, well, well, what about the prices of the raw ingredients? Inflation. Inflation. <laughs> Well, I don't think that we should really think about inflation too much, because if we do, then the whole premise of what I'm saying can basically just fall apart. <laughs> and anyway, anyway, a lot of the dishes are not affected by inflation. I mean, take, for example, crispy aromatical duck. I mean, basically, you're a Chinese takeaway owner, you're driving past a pond, you, 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 you kill a duck, you make it into the crispy... I mean, we shouldn't even be charged for that dish, you should be free, that one. <laughs> about something like, uh, you know, when it's a special fried rice? You know, you know when sometimes you go into a takeaway and you just think, hmm, I'll have something a bit different tonight. Hmm, special fried rice. Mm, it's, got all, it's got bits of egg in it, isn't it? Oh, lovely. It's not just egg, of course. Also, it's got the peas. Hmm, well, it, well, it's the peas that make it special. I mean, <laughs> when, when you lift up that lid of one of those little foil containers and you see that glint of pea, you know you're in for quite an evening. <laughs> Actually, you actually you don't actually get that many peas in one of those containers. <laughs> Not that many. In fact, there's always nine. <laughs> I've checked, and, uh, and, and always evenly spaced, no clusters. It's just right there, just the right number, isn't it? Oh, yeah, and also, not just that, of course, you've got the, the, the king prawns in there. We'd be special enough with just the egg and the pea. The, the, the jar of sweet pork, I mean, the, the flecks of ginger. I mean, the dish is almost overwhelmingly special. <laughs> I suppose it's something really uh, to be enjoyed well, on a special occasion like... like yeah, well, yeah, what about you, sir, sitting there looking like that? You look like a special sort of man. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine the two of us having an evening together. <laughs> We'd want to eat something quite luxurious, wouldn't we? Yes, yeah, so we'd get home and uh, we'd, uh, we'd eat all the other the prawn crackers and that first, and then we would just slowly unwrap that special red rice. <laughs> mm, share it. Mm. I'd sit on your lap. <laughs> It'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Mm, yes, there's, nothing, there's nothing like just sitting there on the lap of some, some really lovely man like you, the beginning of a beautiful romance, and then just biting into all that rice with a... The egg and the water chestnut. Mm. Oh, lovely, isn't it? Super. Really makes up for having a flippant, terrible life. <laughs> you know, what a consolation. What, after a life of misery with the frigging price rises and people forcing me to play crazy golf, <laughs> I'll just bite into a load of old chewy old prawns. That's really going to take my mind off Al Qaeda and worries like that. <laughs> Sitting on the lap of some brute. <laughs> Who cares nothing for my emotions? <laughs> Just th one thing on your mind, sir. Mm, finish your rice, Paul, and get down to my cock. <laughs> That's you. I don't know why I waste my time with you. You make me feel sick. Do you know how much that dish costs? <laughs> They're laughing at us from their walks. <laughs> That's it.